Hello guys and welcome to Short Cryptology, where we talk about crypto related topics and gaming. Today we are gonna dive into the details of the KK token, the Kingdom Carnage token, which just went live on PancakeSwap and will soon start trading in you know, other in other places. Um, if you've watched my videos so far, you know that uh, the token's price is still low and it's still, on my personal opinion, worth buying. And uh, of course, it's not financial advice, so you should do your own research, etc., etc. But uh, today, I just wanted to give you some information about the token, so you can decide for yourself. The token itself is hugely interesting. And the, the part that I believe it's most interesting is that uh, right now the token is not uh, uh, in fully implemented into the game yet, meaning that the utility is still coming, so the potential to grow and become more and more valuable for the token is still there. If anything, it's at its peak because um, the price right now is probably around the lowest that you'll see it for a while, but we'll see. Now, let's dive into it. So, if you guys don't know, Kingdom Carnage is a turn-based uh, NFT game, and uh, the token will be implemented into the game um, for a very, very quick, like, detail about the game. You can see it's a card game, but the fighting are live. Let's see if this thing is high quality enough. Yep. As you can see, you have your high hand with a given amount of cards. You have a deck you get your cards from. Uh, but once you place the cards uh, on the battlefield, they become action figures, kinda. They become actual characters that fight and have abilities and such and that you have to beat the opponent's deck by killing the actual opponent character. So, it's quite cool. Now, you can see every card has a level, they have all kinds of stats, damage, and special abilities, health, they, have, they are either ranged or melee, magical, or physical damage, different kind of levels of rarity, there's a lot going on. And uh, this, oh, of course, all these cards are backed by NFTs, and uh, if you want to like make a level 2 card, you have to merge to level 1 cards, so there's this kind of method that makes cards more difficult to hoard, so you're inclined to destroy your NFTs to make a stronger NFT, so the demand will stay high for all levels of NFTs, stuff like that. Plenty of abilities to choose from, some more and more or less interesting. And uh, dynamic cards are cards that level up uh, by certain rules, like how many people have been playing in the last 30 days, like um, we can see here. Of course, this is the official website for the game, as you can see here. The this card is called, called Velkan. You can buy it on the currently on the website. This is one of the few cards left that can be bought this way. The other cards are bought through the marketplace from other players. And this card levels up depending on how many people have been playing the game in the last 30 days. So currently, I believe uh, we are around level I don't know seven or eight. Uh, no, actually six rare with around 800 8000 people playing if we ever get to 200000 people playing it will become legendary level 10 have all kinds of special abilities and good stats so these cards are special and very interesting this said you have a hero with equipment you have uh, um, your own deck, of course, you can build, uh, depending on your cards. You have uh, special equi equipment that also gives you hero HP, but also gives you extra decks up here to be able to mess around with. 
you have the rarity, like you said, the filter to see the cards, you have to upgrade the cards by merging them. There's different currencies. This red gem currency will probably be discontinued and replaced with a token, so that we have an idea of what it's used for. Blah, blah, blah. There's special modes like endurance mode, and then there's the ranked PvP. We will see about the like balanced 1v1, stuff like that, there's dungeons. But yeah, I have more videos about the topic, so that's it for now. If you guys want to see more details, just go in my channel, have a look. There's plenty of videos on everything about this game. Now let's dive into the token. If you know anything about the game, you'll know that uh, currently the game doesn't use the token. The token just released and uh, right now we're looking into the future utility of the token and that's why I think it's super super interesting to die uh, dive into the game right now because you will likely not be able to find the token at this price anymore once all these features are implemented so first interesting feature sponsorship you will be able to pay other players to complete dungeons for you the player gets KK token and you get the NFT for the dungeon runs. Meaning that you can set, they call it a ban bounty for a given dungeon. I'm not sure exactly which dungeons will be eligible for this. I know Catacombs, which is the premium dungeon, will be eligible. I don't know if you can do it with every dungeon. That would be lovely. I think uh, that this idea is super cool because like people who only want to farm NFTs can spend a little bit of money and get somebody else farming for them, so passive income pretty much. But at the same time, people who want to play a lot can be paid for farming, and if the offer is high enough, people will love to do that. I, for one, would love to be able to just be paid for playing that way, not really getting the NFTs maybe, but if they, if they offer enough i would love to have some fun and do some dungeons sometimes at least uh, it's less of a chance game as long as you can complete the dungeons you get paid so you're not playing the chance game with the nfts which it's a game you could win you could get an, a rare nft and earn a lot of money but at least that way if you're not into that gambling or if you're out of options to run it because you're out of price power that's an interesting thing. The one I liked most, probably, are the two following ones, actually. The Midas Vault. This allows you to unlock a spe special character that levels up the, the longer you hold the KK token. This special character, I believe, will be a card you can play or something like that. It will have uh, different uh, um, items, sales, and... Uh, edition characters that you can unlock probably by doing something some missions or something with it we don't have much information on the topic but uh, it will allow you to have this option which is very interesting by itself but if you have a st um, holdings in the vault you also can access the voting and the voting is the next thing that's very interesting I, because if you vote, you will receive a percentage of the voting pool, which is a reward um, that is spread between everything, everyone who votes. <coughs> to be able to vote, you either have to hold KK tokens in the vault, and you get to vote for free if you're doing that. Otherwise, if you're not someone who holds KK token in the vault, you have to pay to be able to vote. So, they really want to push you to do this vault thing. Second of all, tournaments. The tournaments are probably going to be PvP, mostly online PvP, where there will be free tournaments, paid tournaments, uh, depending on the kind of tournament. And uh, all of them will have different rules, like some tournaments will have you fight players with your own deck so the stronger players who have the best nfts will win 
or their tournaments will have pre-made decks, meaning that um, if you have uh, very good cards or you have very bad cards because you're a new player, it doesn't matter because you get a deck, everyone will have the same or similar deck in strength and so only the best, the luckiest, the most skilled player will win. That's an interesting thing too. Dungeon boosting, that's very cool. You can pay players to help you run dungeons. <laughs> this uh, is interesting for a few things. I believe that you can get help if you're a new player and want to farm and uh, get started in the game. You can invest that way and get your runs in and get cool loot. And people who are strong can help people and learn from it. So it's a win-win scenario. <coughs> but also there are dungeons that you can only do online. So people who don't have friends to play with and stuff, or they don't have a guild strong enough to help them or something, or just people who are so high up on the curve that s they struggle to find other people strong enough to help them, maybe that could be a feature where if you for some reason don't have enough people to run a dungeon, you could pay someone else to help you. So you get your run in and they get the money, so win-win again. Action House, this is a huge thing that I believe will change the game for a lot of us. The Auction House allows you to buy and sell the cards on a private exchange compared to like Jumpnet or even worse like uh, OpenSea where you have to pay and eat and eat gas. Ugh, that's awful. Anyways, um, in this Auction House you will most likely use the Jumpnet version of the KK token but I hope that they will allow you to use the BSC version as well. Anyways, the Action House will be simp a simple exchange of NFTs where people will set a price for an item and just buy. One interesting feature is that the price is set in US dollars and uh, it change you pay with KK token so the the actual price in KK token changes depending on the value of the token, but the price remain of the NFT you're selling remains in US dollars, meaning that if you want to sell for a given amount of dollars, you don't have to worry about the shifting price of the token itself, which mm, it's debatable, but I believe it's a cool feature by itself. Rental is also a cool thing for people who have a lot of uh, cool NFTs or equipment and stuff, which is that people can pay you to lease your cards or equipment that you're not using, and uh, that, that allows them to have a stronger deck without having to farm or pay full price for a card. And at the same time, you can keep your own strong NFTs that you're not using and uh, still earn from it. This is interesting because it allows people to keep the price of the NFTs up because you're not necessarily pushed to sell all the stuff you're not using because you can rent it to other people and uh, people can use it and you don't have to sell, meaning that there will be less selling pressure, less price action in the downside. So it's a way to ensure that the NFTs keep the price up even after years of the game being out, where a lot of stronger players will have a ton of high level cards probably. So I like this as well. The guild. The guild, yeah, we don't know enough yet to really see how good they are, but I do believe that uh, there's a lot of potential here. To create a guild you need to pay in KK tokens, so that's one thing. Um, oopsie. And um, to 
um, use the guild and use the potential of the guild, you have to purchase guild resources. These guild resources will then be invested for per perks or dungeons. And uh, in general, it will be a way to have people play together and uh, invest together. So richer people will be able to make richer guilds and, uh, I don't know, grow the social aspect, I guess social aspect of a game is very interesting too because the whole connection between people in a game gives it more value and pushing for um, social and for interaction between players is always a good thing to keep players entertained because a sim single player game will eventually phase out or become old or boring while a social game could become just good even just because of your friends that you made in the game and such so that's a good thing here they have a graph representing well a drawing representing the logic people being able to exchange between themselves vote and getting paid from the voting pool and uh, getting in-game rewards for like the vault and stuff so lots and lots of things like we discussed here is the roadmap this is flexible from my understanding but right now we are about Q4 of 2021, if you want, in a way. Like, we are between the Q1 and the Q4. So, Q4 2021 and Q1 2022. We are in that area because we haven't quite completed the Q1 2021. The lesions are out. Uh, the KK token is not yet implemented into the game, but it is live on the centralized exchange listing and the token launch and everything. So we did some of the Q1 2022. We are still waiting for the token to be integrated into the game. And the voting rewards will be the first thing they want to put in the game, which is cool because that means that holding the token will already make you some passive income as soon as this is implemented, which again, it's a matter of days or m at most weeks at this point, from what I can gather. And then, um, in the Q1 to Q2, we will see more complex stuff, like uh, the player sponsorships uh, and the action house, so, and rentals. So, this is where I believe the token will be even more valuable. In the Q1, we'll probably see a growth of people investing into the token because getting pa like passive income, some giving it some utility in just holding the token will surely increase its value drastically, very quickly. And then Q1 to Q3, we will s finally see the multi multiplayer and a new race. The new race is not confirmed yet. We know that it could pu be pushed towards the end of the year in favor of the token related stuff because the game developers want to ensure that we as players get rewarded for holding the token and being active in the community etc. And that's a very cool thing. I believe that they are really doing us a favor by prioritizing that stuff over new content for, for the game right now. Because, like, um, if, the, if the auction house, for example, were to be delayed and uh, they release the ET elves before completing it, that would directly impact how we can earn from the game and the value of the token. So I believe that this is the best way of thinking that they could ever have. And multiplayer will give so many options to the developers to create new game modes, release new kinds of dungeons and PvP fights, etc. It's huge. Then, towards the end of 2022, something might slip in 2023. There will be pets and breeding, which I know nothing about. They, it's just an idea from what I can gather. Cash tournaments will be fine, and once m multiplayer is stable, they will be looking into it. You can't really reward people with money in a tournament that's unstable, so they will first have to make everything stable. Guilds, sadly, will only come towards the end of the year, but that's alright. I think that the other features are more important. <coughs> affinity and Polkadot chain support, that all depends on Affinity itself. But it's cool that they have it in the roadmap so that they can 
show people that it's not only about the game itself, there's a whole lot of stuff going on around the game with Engine, Affinity, Polkadot, everyone is working on growing the environment, so the game can really only grow from here. Tokenomics, well, there's lots to learn here and not so much time. But, um, they're, like there's 200 millions for the rewards. Th this alone is huge. It means that staking, and, well not staking, but uh, the vault will really give a lot of tokens out. Game drops, meaning people can drop the currency in the game by running dungeons and such, that's also very interesting. Of course there's the team getting a cut and the partners, that's normal. Liquidity for the trading exchange, that's right. The token sale, I don't know if this is the pre-sale. And then there's always a reserve, that's standard. So I don't really see any red flags here, and even the vesting is cool with um, like uh, the reserved res reserves being blocked for two years, which is alright. Rewards being partially locked uh, into the vesting schedule. So no real way to really drown out the price too much. The liquidity, of course, because of its nature, will be released right away. And the um, token sale has a lot of details, but in general I believe in about 9 months at most, 10 months, most of the real pre-sale stuff token will be released. So that's very, very interesting. Now, I... I'm aware that this video is probably way too long already, so I'm just gonna give you a teaser of the next video coming. In the next video I will be covering the white paper, which eh, says most of what we saw in this video, but it goes in detail from another standpoint and it's more of an official paper, so... I will be releasing the video soon. If you guys like this video, please do join on my next video where I go through this interesting white paper. I thank you for watching. Please let me know if you have questions. I'm sure that I know more than what I've <laughs> been saying. It's always hard to say everything. So, have a nice day for now. See you soon.